Greetings, everyone. This is uh, your instructor, Nathan Noble, for the SQL Server class, CIS 23. We're doing something a little bit different in this class, so I wanted to make a video about it. Um, in the last class, we had some issues because everyone was using, this is an online class, so we don't have a computer lab at the school to use. So everyone was using their own computer. And the fact that the computers are so different made it a challenge. Um, different setup and so people some people would have issues with the SQL Server installation etc so to get around that this time um, your first assignment will actually be going in and getting a free subscription to Microsoft Azure as a student you can get a free subscription and it will suffice for what we're going to do for this course so for the first exercise you're going to go click on that link there and you are going to sign up you have to put your email in and you'll get, I think, $100 of free Azure use as a student. We will not even come close to using that amount in the course that we have. Uh, and there's obviously a lot more to Microsoft Azure, which is essentially their cloud offering uh, than the SQL Server course we'll have time to cover, but at least give you some exposure to that. Then once you've activated your account, you're going to create a virtual machine Essentially, instead of using your own machine, you're going to create a virtual machine that we'll use to install and run SQL Server for the first couple weeks of the course. So I wanted to show you that, how we can do that. Okay, so right now I've got my free account, and if I'm on the home, Azure Home here, I choose Virtual Machines. I actually already have one, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make one. So we're going to add a virtual machine. And you will, the first time you do this, you'll need to create a new resource group. You can call it whatever you want. For mine, I called mine CIS 23 Spring 2021. Um, so in my case, I'll select it. In your case, you will create new. And then you're going to have to choose a virtual machine name. Um, And I don't think it can have dashes or spaces. So I call mine SQL Server, CIS 23 SQL Server 2. The region, um, it's going to complain, I think, if you use the Eastern US. So this is basically where is that cloud server going to live. You can choose the defaults for some of these other things. Now, one thing, I for the size, there's all different kinds. I think the default that I saw first was a pretty expensive one. Um, like an $85 a month, you're not going to want to choose that one because you'll burn through your $100 in a month. And our course goes for about two months. So I, the one I picked is the cheapest one. So if you, you want to click see all sizes and uh, it'll calculate the cost per month of having that virtual machine running. Now remember you have $100 free. So this is a $10 a month cost. So I could theoretically have this thing up and running for 10 months or so, nine months before I run out of my free student uh, subscription. Um, you might also pick, you could pick the $17 one as well. You can see that the $17 one is probably going to work for our course and it has two gigs of RAM instead of one, which will make the machine a little bit speedier. One gig of RAM is the minimum requirement for installing SQL. So either of these will work. I picked this one just to be safe, um, but you're going to have to pick a VM size. So you do that. Um, click select. Try that again. And come on. There we go. Okay, so I picked select. So now I've got my <clears throat> my um, virtual machine size, um, and you're going to want to pick Windows Server 2012 R2. There's a whole bunch of options you can use, and if you want, if you got another type of Windows that you use normally, maybe you want to choose 2016. You're welcome to do that. I will be running on 2012, and so each one's going to be slightly different. So. Um, if you want to 
make sure that your machine is looking just like the sample machine that I'm using, I suggest using the 2012 data center. Okay, and then you're going to have to create an admin account. Uh, it can be whatever you want. Um, you're going to do the user, and then it's going to it's going to require you to have a certain number of a certain number of characters. Okay, making sure that the passwords are the same, and this will be the essentially how you log in. Um, let me do this real quick. I'm going to quit out of here. Okay. Um, and then you can just choose the defaults for some of this stuff. You're going to want to allow the RDB port. That's remote desktop. And that will essentially allow you, once the virtual machine is created, to log into the machine from your laptop. Um, so that should all be fine. So I'm going to click Next. Um, you can choose the defaults for a lot of the rest of this. The important issue was the issue of the cost, the size of the RAM and the CPU, which we just we've already decided. You can pick the standards here. Um, no advanced is necessary. No tags. Okay, so now we review and now we'll create. Okay, so it's giving us the price, fine, and then there's a create option over here which my video recording thing is not letting me do. So you click create and then it'll, you'll have to wait a few minutes and it will go ahead and create the virtual machine. I'm not going to do that because I already made mine, but that's what you'll do. You'll click create and then you'll have to wait for a bit. I'm going to go back to the home. And I'm going to show you the one that I already created. Um, and there it is. Now, another thing that will happen is once the once it's created, it's going to give you an RDP file that you can download. And I'll show you what mine looks like. So the RDP file is here. And that will essentially allow you to remote desktop into that server. So if I double click on it, I'm logging in from a Mac. It should work from either account. And then when I want to log in, it's going to, re it's going to request I enter my username. So I do my username that I entered into the dialog just there. And it should let me in. And so there we have it. So um, this is actually, I've actually done a bit of work on this server, but um, I'm going to scale the window here, scale. Um, so yeah, this then, then this is the actual server that I will be using to install SQL Server on. Now, just to back up a little bit, you if you're really going to be using Azure in a business context, you have the ability to create a SQL Server. You, you have the ability to create a, ser, uh, a Windows Server that already has SQL Server installed on it and everything. But obviously, for the purposes of this class, one of the things we're learning how to do is to how to install SQL Server and how to run it, etc. So that's why I'm having you guys install a or create an empty Windows Server, and then we'll some of the, in some of the subsequent steps in the class you guys will go ahead and install SQL Server. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to create a virtual machine in Azure once you have created your free student account. Thanks a lot.